This is LXDF, and I'm looking at From Where's Import Ransom from the Run Code competition a couple weeks ago. Uh, this might have been my favorite challenge from the competition. It was not uh, particularly coding heavy, uh, but it was uh, more of an RE, reverse engineering, uh, Python challenge. Uh, but it had Python, which I love, so I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I'll say, even though you know, I love it, I actually skipped through, I think I skipped ahead on part of it and took kind of a shortcut that I'm excited to show you all. Um, so anyway, I got to this challenge with like less than an hour into the, with the comp in the competition left, and I just didn't have time to really look at it. Um, I played with it a little bit since then, but I've not actually finished it. So I figured it'd be fun to get there with you all and you can, hopefully we don't get too ir ir uh, irrevocably stuck along the way. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and dive in. Um, you seem to have been hit with some ransomware. Uh, we caught the command that was running to infect us, but we have no idea what it's doing. Can you help us get our files back? Um, and there's this Python command, and then we've also tarred up the encrypted files for you to analyze here. Um, so this is interesting right here. Um, so Python 3 minus C uh, means run whatever comes after it as this string that comes after the dash C as a command. Um, and then what's put in that command is, uh, this is a bash subshell between the uh, dollar sign open parentheses and close parentheses. And so basically whatever, it's gonna execute whatever happens in there and then whatever would have printed to standard out becomes a string that's passed in here. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and so what it's doing is curl minus S. Um, you need the minus S on curl anytime you're piping it into something else or else it does that weird, that, that annoying like status line. Um, anyway, it's, just, it's that's what the minus S does. Uh, to ransomwares for sale slash payload. Uh, and then it base64 decodes it and then uh, gun unzips it, gun zips it. Um, and so basically what we can we can expect that this is returning a uh, uh, compressed base64 encoded payload, uh, which then gets decoded, de decompressed, and passed into Python. Um, in fact, if we want to grab this payload, we will just grab that full line right here. Um, let's go over here and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna make a directory for this one because I think it's gonna get big. Uh, call it where's um, and go ahead and start tmux. Let's always start tmux. Um, so paste that command in there, and then we can save this to a file uh, where's.py. And if we want to look at that real quick, it is an utter mess. Um, and in fact, if I'm hitting page down and nothing's happening, it's interesting. Um, if I go to the end of the line, it's actually just one long line. Um, and it's a mess. And uh, not going to try to look at it like that anymore. Let's go ahead and quit out of here. We will certainly come back to that. Uh, the other piece we have is these this tar file here. So let's I not mean to open that. Let's we'll just grab it this way. W get that. There we go. And we can uh, tar. If we want to just look at what's in there, we can do this. So it just has four files, all with the .ex .enc for probably encrypted extension. Um, so we'll do a tar xf on that, and we've got the files there. Let's make a directory uh, files move star .enc to files. Cool. Um, so let's go check it out. What's in here? Um, the first one's a JPEG. Um, that's I certainly can look at that, but um, I'm probably going to start with the smallest text file. Seems like a most reasonable place to start. Um, if I just do a vim on TPS reports, uh, it's kind of a mess, but there's actually a bunch of um, plain text stuff at the end here. Um, your files have been encrypted. You have 24 hours to pay five doge to get your files back. Uh, there's the presumably the doge address. And once it's sent here, you know, this is a typical ransomware message. Um, it does have this interesting uh, number here at the end. Um, and you can see that it seems to use uh, the colon to delimit. Um, I'll certainly come back to that. I'm good. That's going to be important. And for the rest of this looks kind of encrypted. Um, I always like to use XXD and pipe into less to take a look to see if there's any sort of pattern or anything. Um, but up until this point, it kind of just looks random. Uh, so let's look at, um, let's look at users.txt as well. And we've got random stuff. I'm just paging down here and at the end. Uh, same thing. We got colon, a number. I have to check and see if that number's the same. Um, your files have been encrypted, blah, 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 blah. blah. Let's um, get a new terminal here. Fix the files. Uh, what was the first one? TPS reports. 
and two less. And so 45015, 45015, 7906. Yep, so the number looks the same on both of those. Um, again, I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but it will come into play later. Um, so we'll get out of that. Get out of that. Um, okay, so that, that I got a feel for what's going on there. Um, anything else I need to get from here? Uh, sample input, so for my solves. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, for my solve script, I'm going to give it a path to some files as well as this URL, and then it's going to give it the flag. So, um, all right. So I think it's time we probably go back and take another look at uh, Python. So the Python was a mess, right? Um, we looked that it was too much. Um, this is where th there's a tool um, called Black, if you pip install Black, that will try to take your Python code and clean it up and put it into the, there's a the specification Python has that says what it's, what your code should look like as far as formatting. Um, so if you run that and run on there, and then we do a uh, vim on there, it comes out much prettier. Um, now this is still not like obviously readable code, um, but it's very all right away. I can start to see what's going on much more so than before. Um, so there's a, there's multiple layers of array here and, you know, just because it's in an array doesn't mean it's just, it's just a level of obfuscation, but it, you know, it just, it's just going to get work its way through the arrays. The interpreter is, and, uh, when it runs through some code, it's got to figure out it's going to do so. So, um, this right here is a large list comprehension. Um, so you can think of this, I would always show this on one line, but you know, so it's doing, uh, in fact, here's the full list comprehension right here. Um, so this is doing global, you know, globals.update uh, x1 colon x0 for x in zip, uh, these things. And so if you remember what zip does, let's do it, show that real quick. Uh, if I have a equals, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and I have b equal uh, a b, c. Um, zip will combine, if I want to loop over the two of those together, kind of combining them, um, it'll do so, zip will put them together into pairs um, up to the length of the shorter one. So um, I can do something like uh, x comma y for x comma y in zip a comma b, and you can see it returns 1a, 2b, 3c, and then once once B is out, you know the zip stops. Um, there's a cool trick. You if you ever well, well actually probably, I'm sure we'll get there later. Um, Iter Tools has a thing called Cycle, and what that what Cycle will do is Cycle. You can put um, so let's say what was the short one was B. We put a cycle around B. It'll make it'll make this one repeat forever the same pattern. So this one will just go A B C A B C A B C A B C forever. Um, so now when I zip them together, I get 1A, 2B, 3C, 4A, because it's the, the cycle and back at the beginning, 5, 5B, you know, like if, I, if this was longer, it could go 6C, 7A, etc. Um, so anyway, slight tangent, but that whole point of what I'm showing there is um, zip combines, is a way of you sort of combining two arrays together so that you can loop through them uh, as pairs. Um, so the two things we're looking at here, the, the bottom one is just a series of strings, and it looks like it's letters uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Um, no A, B through H. Um, and the first one is functions, lambda functions. And we've talked about lambdas before, but I'll give an example in a sec. Yeah, I'll give an example now, actually. Um, if I do Q is equal to lambda X, uh, X minus one, really simple. So if I do Q of four, I get three. So basically what I've done here is I've created a function. This is no different than saying um, def. I'm, sorry, I'm running out of like uh, f. Oops, no def f. I don't know how much I can do this on the command line of x. Return x minus one. And now when I say f of four, I get three. But that's exactly the same thing I did with this lambda function. Is I just said lambda where it takes in an x, it returns x minus one. That it's a it's a way to define functions really shortly, um, and it's useful for like 
if I, uh, when I, when I call the sorted function, um, you can call sorted, uh, you give it array, and then you say key equals, and this is a func that returns uh, a value that can be sorted. And, you know, I could define a full function up there, but a lot of times in my code, if I just want to say the function is like, uh, you know, it would be really common to say like, uh, the key equals lambda x, and then say like um, x sub four. And that way I'm just sorting on the fourth argument. You know, each x thing coming in in the array has a handful of, it is actually an array itself, and I just want to sort on the fourth item. Now I've done that. I didn't have to go write a new function. Uh, so lambdas, that's what, that's what lambda is. Come back up here. Um, and so for example, this lambda right here is just going to take an x and it's going to return b of x. Uh, this one right here is going to join, uh, you know, create a string joining uh, whatever comes back from e of x. Um, so this is already starting to get kind of, you know, a little bit uh, confusing and obfuscated. You know, this one up here, it's going to take x. Presumably x is a string or an array at this point, And it's going to get it from basically the back half, the length, the full length of x divided by 2 to the end. And then it's going to take, so it's basically swapping the first half and the second half, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's what each of these lambdas is doing. Um, now it's zipping these together. So this, this one, you know, it, as we loop through, you know, four X and zip, this one, um, is going to loop F, the string F and this. And so the first, uh, when I showed a lamp, when I showed this loop back here, I did four X in Y zip AB. Um, I could also do X and then do X sub zero comma x sub 1, and that does the same thing. Um, if it's just, if I put two things here, it's smart enough to unpack into them. If I don't, it just, you know, I can reference them here. So uh, <clears throat> up here, I'm going to say, I'm going to globals.update, and then x of 1, which is going to be this letter, and then it, the value, that's going to be the key, and the value is going to be this lambda function. So effectively, what I've done is, I've taken it after one loop through, after one, the first loop, I have taken, created a function called f, and it does this. Uh, then I will create a function named d, which does this. I will create a function, which even though b is not yet defined, um, that's fine. I will create a function called c that will do this, uh, et cetera, down the line. So I've now created these six functions. Um, yeah, that's what's, in fact, I can, sh well, what I'll show here actually, um, so this, I'm checking here, this is line 19, I can see right there, um, here. So if I come down, break out of this, I can do my Python uh, minus M PDB to get the debugger. I can do dash C to get a command. I'm gonna break on 19, dash C to continue because I just wanna start running right when I start. And where's, and now I get to here. And I can actually see, it's screwed up a little bit, um, that I now have these functions in memory. Um, so if I do something like, uh, I've got the easiest one, let's see. Uh, I take a string a b c d e f g, and I pass it into f. We we already went over f is switching the first half and the second half, and it's that's exactly what it's doing here. It's returning these two strings, second half, then the first half. Um, it looks like uh, lambda, this whatever the third one was. That's my text is a little so big here. Sorry, like it's it's useful, but uh, c. Is, is some kind of XOR. So if I do um, C of OX, OO, and A, is that gonna work? I might need bytes. It doesn't, let's see, what was that? Oh, shoot. Uh, when you're in PDB, if you type C at the beginning of a line, it's gonna assume that you meant continue. Uh, if you do exclamation point, um, it will do that. It'll actually run the function. Um, so anyway, that there's, there's some lessons. There's, there's a good lesson there. I probably just ran something I didn't intend to run. Um, bytes and bytes. What don't I, it's not liking my XOR. Um, well, I can show this at least with numbers, uh, 41 comma zero. And it comes back the character of that. Uh, let's see. What is, let's make sure that makes sense. Yeah. So there you go. Ord. 
in case that wasn't clear, I passed in 41 and 0. So when you XO or anything with 0, the answer is whatever went in. So that's handy. And the result was the close parenthesis, which happens to have the value 41. Um, so I, that is a long roundabout way of showing you that uh, now, at this point in the code, when I put a break here, these I have these six, seven functions, uh, a, F, B through H are functions that now I now have access to within Python. Um, and it's actually useful because the next thing I'm going to do is the exact same thing again, um, except for this time I'm passing in encrypt binary junk. And what's going to happen here is, again, it's going to pay, go through. These happen to be the same length, and they get zipped together. So it's going to take this and this. This will be x sub 1, or x sub 0 and x sub 1. And this time it's going to pass it into the h function. Uh, on x sub zero, and that's going to be the key, and then the value is going to be import of that. Um, so, one thing we could do, let's see, we're right, where are we here? Wait, what does the h function do? It's the second to last one. Uh, it joins e of x, which is a map of c onto d of x. C is that xor function, so it's going to apply the xor function onto what is the a list map ord okay so map it's going to apply the ord function to each character to get the the number back out um, it's going to create it into a list and then it's going to x order things together i think that makes some sense but frankly i don't need i don't need it to make some sense i can do um let's see what can we what's the easiest thing to do here um Maybe we'll modify this a little bit just to see what's going on. Um, let's do that. Uh, copy where's to where's mod, then where's mod. Let's come down here. Um, this time, instead of updating the globals, we'll comment that out. Um, it's convenient the way it puts it all that on one line because I can just do something completely different here. Um, let's just let's just print. Uh, eight h of x zero. Maybe we'll do this as a format string so we can print a couple things. H of x zero, comma. H of let's just put another thing here. H of one. So now instead of creating these functions, it's just going to load. It's going to print them. Um, and we'll come down here and we'll put our breakpoint at line 43. And, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, we need to do it on the mod. You know, I don't think I saved it, which is probably why it's not printing. Let's try this one more time. There we go. Okay, well, we at least have uh, <laughs> we at least have errors to play with. Let's see. Um, oh, that that helps if I finish out my print statement. That should be it. And we hit the debugger. We hit the well. Okay, so I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Okay, so. Um, you can see, we can see right here, like the first thing it tries to do is import OS and save it as OPO, import URL lib.parse and save it as pop, import URL lib request and save it as op, import URL lib as poo, uh, UUID as OOO, etc. Um, somehow it gets down to, uh, let's see, name poo is not defined, not defined. Um, because it, it is calling bin ASCII here on uh, the it must be using one of these functions and because I'm not I'm no longer saving them as globals now I'm just printing them uh, when it gets to use it it doesn't know it have it there and it's crashing um, and so you can start to get a feel for okay so it's importing all these libraries in this one um, I wonder if I can uh, wonder where it falls Let's see come up here and see if we can make this we'll, we'll give it a quick try and see if it makes it, it can make it any better if not, we won't we won't linger here too long. What if we just print? Uh, 
that one, which that works. Um, I guess it's, I'm guessing it's going to break here. No, that seemed to work fine too. Huh. Um, not exactly sure what's failing there, but but fine. Um, we got you know let's see. Uh, there's one. There's seven imported libraries, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got seven going there. Um, so th it looks like those are the, we now know those are the libraries that are getting imported, uh, and so and they're getting imported as combinations of O and P, etc. Um, if we go down to the next one, so it's the same kind of thing. We're, another one. Now we're putting more functions into um, the globals. Interestingly enough, this time the function names are coming from the second path. Um, but that doesn't, just like the last time, uh, the functions are built off of these previous ones. Um, there's clearly some, you know, new namings coming in here. They're probably coming from the other ones. Um, and there's just a ton of them. Um, there is a lot here. Um, and it was, and I got, you know, so, okay. So here's, I'm guess I can probably very easily pass these in. To get the names of the new functions, um, and then these, this up here, we're defining what we're actually doing with the new functions. Um, you know, there's more places where we're getting these, this the kind of decode to get a string. Um, it looks like every time there's a string, it's encoded through this h or decoded through this h function. Um, there's all sorts of new definitions. Um, <laughs> you know, this looks like it just prints a new line. Um, it was when I got to this point that I was like, I was chugging along thinking, okay, I can, I can start this. I can write down what all these POOs mean and start to map them back. I can start to write out this code. Um, I think what I would do if, if I couldn't find any shortcuts is I would go through and just like I'm starting to say, I would go through here and I would use these functions. These are kind of helper functions. I don't, they're not really important. They're just used to decode things. In fact, I think H might be the only one that ever shows up outside of here. Um, and it calls E which calls C and D, which are these two. Um, and C and D call B, which is the last one, which calls F and G, which is the first. So H is the only one, I think H is the only one that's ever used outside of in here. Um, so basically I can define H and use H to decode things. Um, and then I would come down here and I'd say, oh, okay, cool. I see these imports and I can you know, write down, you know, POO equals this and OPO equals this and move, you know, keep going there. Um, and then I get down to this code. And I, I guess what I could do is start to define what each of these functions do and try to like map it out and write it out in some way clearly. Um, and again, I can guess what I would do if I didn't find a shortcut. Um, but luckily for me, I found a shortcut. So um, we can kind of come to the end here and just see what it does after that. Um, <clears throat> there's another Lambda. Um, I meant to point out at the beginning, actually, um, you know, the flag itself is, uh, you know, there's this meme, you know, that yo dog, I heard you like. Um, and it's your dog. I heard you like lambdas, so I put a lambda in your lambda. Um, that, that is clearly fitting to the challenge here. Um, there's another lambda here, anyway, that does some more mathy stuff to get a binary array, um, which is then, you know, the x comes from somewhere. Oh, we're looping over x in these things. Um, and then there's this list. Uh, there's more, you know, we're actually calling x here. We're looping over some list of functions uh, to, and calling each of them. Um, and again, I could reverse this, I think, uh, but it's going to take a lot of time. And I didn't go that route, so I'm not going to go that route here today. Um, but it's still pretty cool to see what you can do with black and PDB to figure out where you're going. Um, so that all said, we're going to get out of here. And we're going to jump to another tool that is super cool. Um, and that is Snake Trace. Um, and actually, I have to thank um, MCOMI for tipping me to this one. Um, I hope that's how you say his name. I'm realizing now I don't actually know. That's what you get when you just interact with people on Twitter and Discord and Slacks. Uh, but he, this guy is super, super smart guy when it comes to Python, uh, tipped me off to this tool, um, Snack Trace. And so basically, it's an S Trace like tool for Python audit events. Um, and that's cool because what it, you know, if, if you ever run S trace on a binary, it spits out the API or function calls that are the that a executable is running as it runs, um, and so this will do a lot of the same things. Uh, pip install snake pip install snake trace will get you get it on your box, um, and so let's uh, 
I'll go up to a new terminal window here and we can just run snake snake trace uh, where's that pie and we can see what happens very quickly uh, we can see it runs through here and a lot going on here um, the good news for me is almost all of this is the decoding stuff um, that I don't have to care about all these code new events um, I could go through these and try to figure out exactly what's going on but um, What's interesting is it actually starts doing stuff down here right at the end. Um, and so we're still importing. Here we go. So now we got a socket uh, get address info. Uh, on, so it's looking up the URL that we got from the beginning. Um, it is succeeding in that and it's calling connect. Uh, and then it is trying to uh, list all the files in temp super sensitive files. Uh, so there's two things going on there that I think I can think. One is I want to check what the you know what happens if there's files in super sensitive files. Uh, the other is I'm curious to know what's going on in the network. Uh, so let's first check what's going on in the network. Um, let's see. Oh, I think that's. Let's see. Close that out. Okay, that's good. All right, that's good. And we'll run it. Just run it again and follow TCP stream. Um, so it gets, it call, goes to get contact or slash contact um, for this is the, the server we're looking at. Um, and the response comes back with this message. Um, now, interesting, you know, I, I noted earlier when I was looking at the uh, files that there was a number in there and that number is not here. So oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't mean to do that. Let's see, is there anything else to look at? Not to this. Okay, so that was it. That's all it did. And that is not super interesting. Um, but I'm wondering if we can make it talk more. So that is where we should start looking at super sensitive files. Um, for the sake of convenience, I'm going to go ahead and just create myself a link. Uh, to, oh, I guess I should create a directory first. So make dir uh, temp better, make it easier to copy and make sure I don't get a typo like that. And then I'm just going to do ln minus s. Oop. Super sensitive files. That's that is not what I want to do. Uh, ln minus s slash temp slash super sensitive files like that. And so now if I run ls minus l, uh, you can see that I've got this folder here of super sensitive files that is the file thing I want there. So now I can do something like echo the uh, please subscribe. Do this, I guess typos don't really matter, but channel on YouTube. I can put that into super secretive files uh, like this dot text. Now, oop, did not mean to rerun that, but that's not gonna hurt anything. Let's go back up here to snake trace. And so here's our scander where we where we just basically died last time. Um, and this time it actually opens up the encrypted version of the file. It open for writing. It opens up for reading the unencrypted version. Uh, we get another call to the ransomware, um, to the rent and this time the ransomware site. And this time it's got a, to the gen key. Uh, there's a post, uh, with this UID and the name of the file. And then you know, with this URL, so this URL lib request happens first, and then it ends up calling these sub, you know, the, the socket get address info, the socket.new, the socket.connect are all coming from that. Um, and then I have os.remove my like this.txt. So if we look at, if we look at our super sensitive files directory now, um, we just have, I think I, that was, a, that was some up arrow mistakes I made. Let's get rid of that. But we do have the like this.enc. Um, and if we, look at it, it's empty. Now that's interesting, let's see. Oh. And that you can see it's a size zero right there. Um, now that's interesting. Um, and it's something to be aware of when you're running something like snake trace, um, because it's gonna mess with, it could mess with the timing of things. And so if I come back up here and do, let's see, let's put that back, create it again. Uh, let's remove star.enc, move that. 
And instead of running snake trace on where it's that pi, if I just run Python, it's not Python E. Now, if I do really good, so knowing I got to remember to put that there. Now I got 269 characters there, um, which is interesting because it's longer. Oh, because of the message, I bet. Um, so we put this here. Let's look at it again. Um, it went from 44 to 269. If we vim super sensitive files uh, like this .enc, uh, we can see there's some junk up here, and then there is a number. Um, in fact, the number. Um, let's look at that. Starts in 2746, ends in 4150. Um, let's this for a second. Let's go back up to our 2746, ends in 4150. So that number was already included. That number must be something generated on my computer because it didn't come back in this first request, wherever it was. Uh, well, wherever it was. It didn't come back in this request. And then we pass it as an argument in the next request out. Um, so it must be something generated on my computer, and then the file name. Um, okay. And then the message that we saw come back, and that looks that. Um, if we look at the length, um, I sus one thing that I always want to do when I start looking at encrypted stuff is to know if it's a block cipher or a stream cipher. And the way to do that is to compare the length. So um, we'll copy like. Uh, we'll go to super sensitive files. Uh, we'll copy like this.enc to like this.enc.mod. We'll open that up and we're going to go jump forward to that and we're going to delete all this. Not the last one. And we'll get out of here now. And now if we run. Uh, I bet you I'm have an end line here, but we basically have the same size. Um, the encrypted, when I took away all the, the message that gets tacked on the end, uh, the encrypted size becomes the same as that. Uh, we could test this a different way. Let's remove star echo test one, bam a lot of stuff into A, put some more stuff into B. Come up here and we'll do Python where stop pi. Now we'll ls.l super sensitive files with a slash on the end, and we can compare. Um, shoot, we should have kept the lengths of those. Just like that. Where's the A? There it is. So now we can compare. Um, I was just like pull up my calc for, uh, from, but from the OS. So B went from 284, from 59 to 284. So if we take away that, uh, the message length is 225, 259 minus 34, 225 again. So I, I feel pretty good now that the length of the message on encrypted encryption is not changing. Um, so we're using a stream cipher that is looking at it byte by byte and um, making doing some sort of encryption. Um, the other thing we want to start to look at is, I wonder if we were still recording when we did that. Do we have, do we capture all that? Um, we get the request for a key. Or else I have running on my computer right now. So we did. Here we go. So like this. Dot, no, let's, let's find A and B. Uh, there's another contact. Here is the gen key for A. Okay. Um, and then if we go ahead one, we get the gen key for B. Um, so you notice it doesn't seem to, it seems to change, uh, change sending a different ID definitely changes it. Um, what will be worth checking on is does sending the same key, does sending the same thing again, um, return the same key, the same thing? Does that make sense? Um, let's so we can we can just actually just do this in curl. Um, where and where's for sale uh, slash was a git key 
gen key minus x and then the data will be that uh, a oh, minus not minus x minus d not proxy just in case we decide we want to so we get that it looks like it's the same each time um, we can check it with a hash yeah so that, that's it's the same um, so it looks like as long as now if we change either a to b it changes if we change uh, the uid here it changes um, so but as long as the UID and the file name are the same, the key that comes back is going to be the same. So that's really useful to know. Clear that out. Um, come back up here. We don't. Let's get rid of MD5 some. There. And I think that's the key we saw for A in here. AD ending in A4. Yep. Cool. Um, anytime I see a key coming back like this. My, my first hope is, especially for, for a stream cipher is, are they just using it as like an XOR? Um, so if we come in here, let's go in here. Um, if we go out, let's, let's go into super sensitive files here. Uh, if we now run Python, let's import uh, bin ASCII, and now we can do key equals, whoops. that get that right there <clears throat> no bin ascii dot un hexify and so that'll turn that from hex into bytes like that which is what we want so you can see the first one is ad d0 ad z0 um so we have a byte string now is the key um and so the question we have is let's let's open up um the with open a just, oh, oh, let's open a.enc as read binary as f a encrypt equals f.read. So if we do something like, uh, what was, uh, let's see, cat, uh, super, what, are we, what are we thinking here? Super sensitive files, a. Okay, so it was test one and a bunch of stuff. Um, so if we do uh, a encrypt, the first byte, XOR, key, the first byte, and then we do a char on that. So just, this is quick and dirty. The first letter is T. That is awesome. Um, see what if we make it, this, if we do that, that's looking really good. Um, we can change this to a list comprehension. So we can do um, for X, X comma Y in zip key, a E N C, and we already looked talked about what zip does. So now we're going to get an X and a Y. So we can just do X X or Y. And then we want to keep this potentially put that or put. We could convert it to char like we did here. Just put a char right around this this X X X or Y. Um, but for something like the Death Star JPG or whatever, we want to be keep it actually in bytes. So we'll just use this. We'll wrap the whole array in bytes, and that'll come back. Um, but that's perfect actually. So what we see is test one comes up to AD. Huh? Let's see. It looks right up to a point. Um, and then it goes wrong. And my first assumption was going to be that this is where the message started. I'm not sure. I'm, I would, if there was another F there, I would be on board with that. Um, print new line try that again with a... we are one f away um that is that is interesting um see what instead of printing i just do len Thirty-three. So it's the first thirty-two bytes are the same. Um, interesting. 
let's we'll, let's put that put that aside for a second. We're really we're, we're definitely on to something here with as far as decrypting it. Um, well, no, let's not put it aside. Let's figure it out. Um, we'll do some more test data. So if we do an echo, uh, let's let's do let's do Python this time. Python minus c print. And this time we're this is the, whenever you have a stream cipher where you think XOR is working like you know that it's using a key just a single byte X or a multi byte XOR and you want to take a look and see if you can figure out um, what the XOR pattern is. Um, I love uh, just doing zero bytes to a thousand of them. And we'll do end equals zero so we don't get a new line on the end. Like that and we'll put that into super secret files uh, empty. Ooh, what do we? Oh, we didn't like that because we're using our single quote twice. Let's try that. Okay, so if we do an ls minus l on on that, a thousand bytes. If we do an xxd on that, put it into less. We can see it's just all null bytes. So what's cool is if there's a just a sing if it's just xoring and if it's just looking at a byte at a time and xoring it with a pattern, we will certainly see that. So we now can come to Python where's dot pi. We run that now. If we do xxd on empty.enc, what we have here is a clear pattern. You can see there's some stream to here, and then it starts over with e0 again, and e0 again, and e0 again. And that pattern is exactly, so each each line here is 16 bytes. Uh, so we've got 32 bytes long. Um, so despite the fact that we're, that we're seeing here that a 64 that's 128 characters. I'll show you real quick. Um, this key that comes back is be a little OCD. Will not get, is 128 characters, uh, which means you know those that those are hex characters. So they're four bits per character, which means there's two characters per byte, which means 128 is actually 64 bytes worth of digital data. Um, so we have a 64 byte key coming back, but it looks like we're only using the first 32 bit 32 bytes of it. Um, because that's the pattern we're seeing here, um, which is cool. Okay. So, and we can come down and check. Let's see if we can find the stream for empty. Uh, I guess we could also more easily just curl it at this point. Let's just curl it at this point. Um, where was I doing that? Was it here? Um, no, let's see. Well, that looks Okay, so we'll do that. Let's grab this. Come down here. Oh, there we go. Is it in here? I don't know. Okay, let's just curl it there. The UID for my computer is... That... And this is empty. Is that all I need? And sweet. So we have E7, 7B, CC, 4, 3, 5, 7, CC. This is matching up really nicely. All the way to, we have a 6D, 6F. 6D, 6F. I'm looking right here. 6D, 6F, D5, FD. And then it restarts. So it only uses this much of the key. Minus n, so I don't print a new line. 64 characters, 32 bytes. That's using the first half of the key. Um, cool. So what I've figured here is I need to know. Let, let's step back and figure out what we know. Um, I, need, I have a file that's encrypted. Um, I'm assuming the challenge of this of this the thing I need to do in this challenge here is go into files. My assumption is I need to decrypt these four files and one of them is going to have a flag in it. Um, to decrypt those files, I'm going to need to submit the file name as well as the UID, which, um, let's go back up here for a second. When I go into here and vim empty.enc, I will notice that this right here, I think I pointed this out earlier, matches the UID that's coming here. So somehow my computer generating something specific to my machine is generating this. It might be a combination of my IP address, my MAC address, who knows something, but it's the same every time on this machine and different on other machines. Um, 
So I need to get this out of here, uh, out of the file. If you can see it's there, the one for my machine. Um, if I come back up here and go to files, then EPS reports, uh, it's a different number, but it's a number. So I got the number here. So I can grab that number. With the file name and the number, I can send off and get the key. With the key, I can XOR the first bits of the file and get the clear text file back. So, uh, at this point, we completely understand how the encryption is working. Um, and now we just need to figure out how to you know, write, write, write something that decodes it. Um, so let's let's say, uh, whereas, where's solve.py. What do we need to do here? We'll start with our shebang. Uh, we're going to import sys for sure. We we'll probably need a lot more stuff, but we'll start with we'll start with that. And maybe it's worth even just taking an outline. I hope this red. I think this red text is the thing that's hard. I updated my style thing here so that like uh, only I guess only comments show up in this red text. It's hard to read. And now of course I'm going to make some comments. So, but that, well, that's fine. So what we need to do is we'll need to um, get list of files in. Uh, and if I look at what is in what, let's see, uh, it's in sys. Wrong one. Let's see, I don't need what's what anymore here. Uh, in the for in sys.argv1. I'm going to loop over files. And then, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get encrypted text uh, and UID from the file. Then I will get, oops, let's see get key from this.argv2 slash gen key. And then I will decrypt file look for flat. All right, I think that's a pretty good outline of what we're gonna do. Um, so first thing we need to do if we're gonna get a list of files is we need the OS module. Um, and we can use the same thing we saw there, we saw them use, which is uh, so files equals os.scander. Um, and then we use os.path.join. This is, path is one of those things you can join just by like slapping strings together, but it works. It, it, you're supposed to do it this way with this path.join. Um, so we'll do sys.argv. Oh, I guess I don't even need to join because I'm just looking in that directory. So. Let's, we'll get rid of that. OS.scander on sys.argv1. That should give me the list of files in that. In fact, always recommend programming in pieces. So we'll come here and we will run this Python minus I to keep a terminal open at the end. Uh, whereas solve, and we need to give it a directory. So we'll give it, um, let's, yeah, let's start with there. What do we have here? What's files? Uh, it's a scander object, x for x in files. And so we have these dirt, we have these entries with the three files here. So that, that is going to give us the files we want. Okay. So we'll loop over the files for file, we can't for fn in files. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is read it in. So we'll do if open. Um, now this is where we'll do os dot path.join this might be easier if I come up here at the very top and uh, dir, uh, d, d equals sys.rv.1 and we can just refer to this as d because I'm, I'm feeling I'm going to use it a bunch uh, os path no, d, d and then fn that'll probably work uh, and we're going to do a read binary on this uh, as app. And then we will just do uh, contents equals f.read. Um, that looks fine. Now what I want to do, I need to figure out how do I, um, when I was looking at the files, let's see, yes, report that. I think what I can do is it looks like it's using this colon as kind of a delimiter. 
Now, what I don't know is it, a colon could show up any number of times in the encrypted stuff, but it only shows up so, so it was one, two times in the message. So I think I can refer to this as if I, if I split on colon, this is going to be minus one. Oh, here's one. This will be minus one. This will be minus two. And what I want is minus three. And then the rest of the file is up to minus three. If that makes any sense. So what I can do here is I can say, oops, I can read this in. I can say UID equals contents.split that minus three. Give that a try. And then I can say uh, inc text, let's just call it inc for the sake of typing, equals contents.split there. And I want everything up to negative three. And because I could have more than one thing there, I don't want this to be an array. So what I'm going to do is dot join all that together so that it puts it, basically it's going to break it into pieces and remove the colon character. I'm just going to put the colon character back in the middle, so, um, but only up to the end. So any colons that show up in here, I just end up with one string. Um, now I know this is all bytes. So I'm actually going to need to come through here and add a splitting on bytes and I'm joining on bytes. Um, and this is where I'll use my, because I'm in the loop, I don't want to loop over all the time. So let's just do an import PDB, PDB dot set brace. Come out of here. Get rid of this minus I. Ooh, okay, let's see. Did not like that. I guess maybe, I, maybe the file name includes the full. Actually, let's do this. Move this right there. And run this again. So now I've hit this PDB or this thing right here. So what is FN? It's A dot ENC. I would expect try it with open contents dot read. Would that work? Then contents two fifty nine contents. Okay, that seemed to work. Um, so then next, let's see where are we? Yeah, let's see if we get the U. Let's see if our UID thing works. That seems to work. What do we do next ENC ENC. Uh, let's see, it ends in CBDA. Go back up here. Uh, CBDA. Cool. So that seems to have what I've done here has effectively gotten the encrypted text and then also managed to pull the UID out of the file. Okay. So now we can do, we've got those things. Ooh. All right, so get, we're gonna, now we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get our key. We'll need the requests module. Uh, we're gonna almost certainly need bin ASCII. So we'll come down here and we will do response equals requests dot get uh, we'll use a f string here, sys.rg2. Get that slash gen key. And then we're going to use data equals. And the first one was UID. We've got that. And then ID. And that's going to be the file name. Um, we don't we don't want the full path though. Um, so I wonder what the best way to do that is down here. So can we do fn is that, how do, what do I, what, what kind of functions can I do to get just the file name? Uh, fn dot name. <laughs> All right. Fn dot name. And there we go. We should have it. Um, in fact, dd to delete that line to paste it back in below. Let's run it and see if we, what we get here. Oh, it does not like that. Okay. List index out of range. Oh, I didn't. Let's, let's actually include that. Ransom dot where's dot for sale. If it was like that. Let's see what we got here. So what does RESP look like? A response 405. Um, come back up here, 
restart this entirely. Quit, run. Close you. Get rid of, clear off that filter. And follow TCP stream. So our gen key to ransomwares.forsale. Method is not, oh, because it's not a git, it's a post. <laughs> of course, I should have known that 405 is in method does not allowed. Um, and we know it's a post. We saw that earlier. I think I even said it out loud. Uh, so we'll come down here, run again. RESP 200 looking good. RESP.txt. And that looks nice. Um, so we can do key equals RESP.txt. Uh, and then we will do bin ascii.unhexlify const.txt and we actually want the first half of that the first 32 bytes there try that and give it a run key len key 32 all right <clears throat> i think we can safely get rid of that and let's see what's next decrypt Let's get rid of some stuff. Diff crypt files, look for the flag. Okay, so uh, this is where we're going to want to do a loop over our file. Ah, we're going to need a cycle. I showed that a little bit earlier. Um, from iter tools import cycle. Now we're just going to do a zip here. So or our loop. So we're going to do, let's start with x for x in um, zip. That. So what are we zipping? We're going to zip the key, and we're going to zip the cycle of the key, because we want the key to just repeat over and over again. Uh, and then the encrypted text, like that. Um, we'll come here, and we can call these k, comma, e. And then we're going to take those, and we're going to do k, x, or e. All right, and then we're going to put the whole thing, we're going to make the whole thing bytes. We're going to call this plain equals that. Now, the next thing in reality, what we're going to do is we're going to open. Um, hmm, that's the easiest way to get the file name. Well, let's see, we'll do with open. Um, if I come down here and just do fn plus dot, oops, dot decrypt, so I get it does not like to combine those two. We can do fn.name plus dot decrypt, and that works. Okay, so I what the os.path.join d fn.name plus we, test. I actually don't know if this will work. Um, we should we should build down in the in the window where we can see. Let's see, does that work or does that actually try to put slashes between them? Yeah, I put slashes between them. I don't want that. So I want to do that. Uh, probably the right way to do that in Python 3 is that. Cool. We'll go with that. So with open, and we're going to write to that binary as f. f dot write not plain. We can see if this works. Um, do I still have a PDB in here anywhere? Do not. Okay. Let's get out of here. Um, let's look at it. LS super sensitive files. We got uh, three things there that are all encrypted. So if this works, we should get dot decrypted for each of them. Um, let's see what is in super sensitive files, a dot, that did not seem to work. No. So let's see what we can do here. Import pdb, pdb dot that trace. Ooh, 
Okay, what is that? Oh. Um, what I really should do up here, probably at the very top, is if fn.ends fn.name if not oops if not fn.name dot ends with dot enc continue basically i'm saying if i'm not dealing with an encrypted file here just move ignore and move on there we go so i'm here now um what am i looking at oops I'm looking at a.enc ENC is equal to some stuff there. P is equal to some other stuff. Um, that looks... I wonder if that's supposed to be an R at the front, or if that's something I accidentally added in. Let's see, Len key, 32, okay, that looks good. Um, so key sub zero, X or think sub zero, Character that is not what we were expecting. Okay, let's have to let's see if we can take a look at this and go back to where we knew it worked because something was clearly working before. Guess I'm going to create a fresh file here. Um, let's remove. Let's uh, make der. Uh, let's make der. Files new. We're going to print. What's the easiest thing? What's what's a good thing? Uh, doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter. Here, let's do echo. This is a new test into um, new files new slash test.txt. We are going to run. Um, oh, I need to put it in the specific directory it's looking for if I'm going to do an encrypt. Um, so never mind that. Remove minus r minus rf files new. I'm going to echo that into super sensitive files test.txt. In fact, we'll do a remove super sensitive files slash star and do that again. So that's the only thing in there. Okay, that's the only file in there. I'll do a Python. Where, where's the pi? There's now an encrypted file in there that's longer than it was before. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, I forgot. I should probably do that with it. Um, I guess I can always get it from curl, but let's clear here. Just remove that. New file back, encryption happens. Uh, let's find ourselves. There's the 480 traffic, follow TCP stream. Make this bigger earlier, sorry about that. Here's the initial contact and the gen key. We get our key. We come down here, um, we open up Python, import in ASCII. Then ASCII.unhexlify that E equals that close there 32 with open ls super sensitive files. So we'll do that slash that comma R binary as F Ink equals f dot read. Let's see if this works. Ink of zero, just a number. That's what we want. E of zero. That worked. That's a that's a T. Um, we can do our full. Grab up here and we can even grab. Grab this whole thing and see what happens. I'm guessing I'm missing an import for sure. Probably for cycle. Run iter to iter tools. 
import cycle. That worked. Okay. Um, I didn't grab the, you know, I didn't split, but we can do that. Let's, let's just double check everything. Um, let's see, what am I trying to do? I, what I called ink is not really ink. Um, I'll call that contents equals ink equals ink. And then we can use this. See if it's the same. We can do it again. Do the new test. That worked. Um, that worked really well. Um, interesting. So I wonder what isn't working now. Um, if we do Python, uh, where's, where's solve, and I give it super sensitive files, and I give it um, HTTP ransom where's for sale. Uh, okay, so let's look at what ENC is here. What is ENC here? Same. Key. Key. The key is different. Cool. I made a mistake getting the key somehow. Um, Len key? That even looks different? Oh, maybe that's probably just what characters show up and which characters don't. Um, okay, the Len key is fine. The key is wrong. Um, so something is wrong in my request up here. Um, let's look at RESP. Text. I don't have an RESP. Oh, no. I have to do what I do here. Um, so that looks, I mean, I made the parse right, so I clearly made the request wrong. Uh, let's see if this, we're going to test my knowledge of request. Um, request, okay, that was it. Let's see, data maybe? Nope. Uh, let's see, there that. What, what do we pass here, body? <laughs> okay, I passed the encrypted file name, and I got the wrong key. Because remember, it takes the, when it sends off the file name, the fi that's part of what generates the key. Um, so I'm passing the encrypted version here, but it needs the plain text version. Um, so let's fix that error. Um, hopefully this troubleshooting is useful as a, like a, how you handle this kind of stuff strategically. Um, so where am I gonna do that? Right here. Let's get, oops, didn't mean to change my comment. Uh, PT name, PTFN equals, uh, I, I guess I can really just go FN dot name minus four. Should get it right. Um, if I do like this, colon minus four, I get what I was looking for. So then come down here and we will get rid of fn.name, we will make that pt plain text file name. Let's get rid of that. And just go ahead and have confidence that this is gonna work. We're gonna get out of that. Oops, not that, we're gonna get out of that. We're gonna run this again. And let's see what we got My in super sensitive files. Um, cat super sensitive files test.tech decoded. This is a new test. We've decoded the file. Um, so make it bigger. Okay, so now I'm going to solve, go back to this again. Instead of giving it the super sensitive files directory, I'm going to pass it the directory of files that I have there. And if I go into the files directory now, if this all worked, as a DOG, EOM. Uh, Death Star Blueprints should make a nice, oops, that's, the encrypted version is not. Um, in fact, I don't know if this is going to look pretty, if it's going to know how to detect this or not. Oh, yep, it did. Okay. And we got, that clearly is decrypted correctly. Uh, we can vim passwords.txt.decrypted, and we've got passwords in here. Uh, we can vim TPS reports. Again, I don't want the encrypted version, I want the decrypted version. Lorem ipsum text. 
vim users.txt decrypted. Um, that's there. Uh, what I'm going to do is grep for rcn on star and see what I get. There it is. It's in the passwords file. So I guess to officially solve this, let's come back up here. Oh, don't want to kill that pain. No. Uh, zoom. Come up to the top clear, and we're going to go ahead and port re. We'll make a regex to find the file we're looking for, or the string we're looking for. Let's see, so we want to come down here, and where we have the plain text, um, we probably don't, if we're going to solve this, if we're actually going to submit to them, they probably don't want us writing to their disk, um, but instead we'll just do um, uh, flag equals re dot search, uh, and then our Okay, so this I've I, I've actually learned this recently. Um, you can do re's through uh, through a regex through binary files. You just have to pass it a binary thing. Um, so we'll do that the binary string, and what we're going to be looking for is rcn dot star that, and we will go ahead and put a question mark here so that that star is as ungreedy as possible, so that it will just go to the first one and stop, and then we will pass it plain, and then if flag print. I always forget exactly how to do this. We might have to, um, in fact, we'll probably just import pdb, pdb.setTrace. And so when we find the flag, we'll break. Um, there's my solver here. Oops, let's go cd dot dot. Run that again. Looks like, did we hit it? We must have, so what is what is flag right now? Flag is a match object. Is it groups? Is it group? It's group. All right. So let's get rid of that. Print flag.group.decode. After that, run that again. Oop, that did not like. Built in method. Oh, okay. Again, anytime you see something where it's like printing out built in method, you can assume you call it, you know, like here, I didn't actually call decode, I just got the decode method, um, which is very unexciting. There's some vim typo errors. Long video. Um, where am I? Okay, exit, escape, write the file. Run the file. Get the flag. Let's see if we can submit it. If this doesn't take, I'm probably going to have to take a break because it's been going on a lot longer than I expected. Uh, what did I call it? It's in the where's file. Where's solve.py. Submit. And we wait for just a second to see if we succeeded. Incorrect output. So let's see. Incorrect output almost certainly means if, if the regex had matched, then the output would be the full, you know, the full, um, it would have to be the flag. It couldn't match anything else. So it must not be finding the flag. Um, so there could be some problem with my decryption, um, but that seems unlikely. And this is where it's useful to really think about um, with run code, you know, they give you an example, but they don't give you all the examples. So where, what else could be going wrong and what other edge cases might I need to think about? Um, and so this is a really tricky one, but the, you know, one thing we can think about is, um, oops, I don't have my caps lock on. Uh, if we go um, into what, what happens if there is, uh, what other cases could I have for super sensitive files? And so what if we do like uh, make dir super sensitive files uh, directory and then we do echo, this is a test, into, oops, let's, uh, let's get that correctly, into directory test.txt. Um, now, if I come back here and run python where's dot python, pi, um, and I come down here, to, did it find it? Uh, let's see, ls super sensitive files directory. And it did, it did encrypt that. Um, even more so, let's, let's see, come back up here, uh, remove 
super sensitive files, directory, test.txt.inc. Uh, and let's come up, let's do it again with uh, snake trace. Let's see what happens. So when we look here, um, we go to our same thing. So it does a scander on super sensitive files, and then it does a scander on directory, and it does the exact same thing there. And so my code right now is not going into directories. So what we probably want to do here is think about what we want to be able to recurse into directories. So um, how to do that is tricky. Let's, um, I always find this kind of stuff, um, the, the, this kind of um, uh, listing directories going into one Python to be a little bit unintuitive. So let's play with it for a second. Um, Actually, let's get out of here. Uh, let's go into super sensitive files here. Let's do a Python and now we'll import OS and we'll say scan equals os.scander. Uh, in this case, because we're in there, we'll just do dot. Make this bigger. Um, so what is scan? So it's, it's an iterator object, okay. Um, if we do uh, scan list equals turn that into a list. Um, anytime you see something that's an iterator, um, that means that it is uh, likely that once you run through it once, you're done. So we'll just turn it into a list like that and we'll call scan list. And so what do we see here? We see a dir entry for the file, a dir entry for directory, and a dir entry for uh, test dot ink, you know, test dot text dot ink. Um, I wonder if there's some way to, <clears throat> let's see, let's, we want to figure out, is there a way to tell if it's a directory or a file? Um, so we will dir on that to see what options we have. Uh, it, <laughs> there, there is, let's see. So we can understand this, but is dir. That's true. Okay, so that's what you can tell. And if we do this on one of our files, False. Okay. Um, the issue we're going to have to think about here is that it's going to get a little bit recursive. Um, and by that, I mean, we can't just do one loop anymore because for each directory, we then need to loop over all the files in that directory, if that makes any sense. Um, so what's the best? I, this is where um, recursive recursion is really useful. Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to define it. Um, I've not definitely not been this far before. Um, we'll see. What if we call def script dir and we take in a path? That's probably good there. Um, and then we're going to take this whole thing. In fact, let's go back here. We actually need all of this here. Delete the D key. We'll come back here. Key to paste. Now move uh, Shift V to select all these lines, and then uh, angle bracket to indent everything. I don't know why it doesn't indent comments. So now we have direct. Uh, this right here is going to hunt the flag, given a path, and we just need to actually let's not, let's not make it path. Let's call it D to make it really simple. So given D, it's going to list all the files. It's going to loop over them. The file name ends with ink. It's going to continue. It doesn't end in ink. It's going to continue. Um, it's going to decrypt the file. It's going to if flag is look for a flag and print it. And so all we need to do now is to be to just be where we were before. Uh, we want to do was it decryptor? Yep. So our file name is decryptor. Decryptor on this dot argv one. So all I've done here, and this is not, um, I'm not solving any of my previous problems yet, but I've now got a function called decryptor and it's going to, I'm going to pass in the argument that's given. Um, and then it's going to, uh, do the rest here doing the same kind of decryption before as before. But what I can do now is come up here and say, uh, if fn dot is dir, which is what I saw before. I'm going to call decryptor on fn. 
And it will wonder if this will work. Let's see. Um, I want, let's, let's think this through all the way before, just to be careful, make sure we're thinking this through. Um, so I'm going to call decryptor on FN. Uh, let's put a, let's import PDB, PDB dot set trace. So we can get a, we can see what happens here. Um, I'm, what I'm worried about, what I'm thinking about here is I can't remember what FN is. And if FN is the full path, so it's going to be the full path of the directory or do I need to pass in um, D here as well. Let's, let's just run it and see. Um, let's go back up and we will run, uh, probably making too much of this. Let's do whereas solve.py decryptor are, oh, of course. Um, then I have to do super secret sensitive files and HTTP ransom dot wares dot for sale. And I'm here. So what is FN? Um, decryptor is that FN dot is dir. That is dir. False. How did I get here? If, <laughs> okay. What I made. So you see the mistake I made right here, where I just called that and it just returned a method. Well, that is an object and it's not nothing. So it's it's going to return true here. So that's. Uh, an easy mistake. Let's go up here and fix this. There we go. Now I'm calling it. Now, let's see where we are. We're, we're, we're at the same spot again. Uh, FN is directory. That's what I wanted. Um, and so what I want to pass into this is if I step in here with S, now I do next. Now when I do a D, um, oops, let's see. When I do a D, when I print D like that, okay. Um, I think what I, so I think this is going to fail for a lot of reasons. Um, for one, so what happens if I, when I, our next step is to scander this. Let's see what happens. Um, see what files look like. Uh, we're not going to go much past this. So we'll say list files. There's nothing there. I think it's empty. So I think that, okay. So what we want to do, come back up here. We know we don't want to just pass fn. We want to pass in uh, uh, os.path.join d comma fn. And that'll pass in the full directory and the file name. And I think actually what I want to do is file name dot name. So I pass in that. Let's try that. Um, and then just, yeah, okay. So that'll. That might work. Let's let's give that a try. Actually, let's let's leave PDP in there. <laughs> I'm not confident in that yet. Okay, so where are we? List. We're here. Uh, Fn.name is directory. So if I step in here, what did I do here? List. Oh, I stepped. <laughs> I managed to step into the os.join. So let's. I think I can return. Okay, step, decrypt or D. Okay, so I'm, I'm back to where I want to be. Next, uh, let's see what D is. Okay, that seems to be working. Or FN and files. What is my FN right now? Test.test.inc. I will open it, I will read it. Get contents, what, what does contents look like? nothing. Um, aha, okay, because I opened FN, and I don't think I want to open FN. So this is why I'm debugging this. Uh, if I just do FN, just test that test that ink dir entry. Um, so what I, what I need to do here is be really careful as I run through here. So with open, um, let's go ahead and be os.path.join d comma fn dot name that and that should open up that should get me the full thing to open Let's see what else i have to do in here um fn.name that'll be fine because that just is giving me the file name still is what i want um i'm not writing out anymore so i don't care so now i'm just be searching um let's 
I feel like that actually might be right. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, so we need to reset. Browse. Oops, that's not it. That's the original code. Um, where is solve? Submit that. Give ourselves a second here. Eyes while running. All right, that's not good. Um, well, we should probably, oh, because I, I think I still have PDB in it. And if you have PDB in it, it's not going to succeed. Um, this is where you should always run it and make sure it actually works before you stop. Still failing. Um, oh, okay. So remember back at the beginning when I ran Snake Trace, something about the way Snake Trace runs screwed it up. So it didn't actually complete. It, it was putting out empty files. So I bet you that's actually an empty file. Um, let's, let's do this again. Remove that. Do that. Python where's the pi? Tell us uh, find super sensitive dash ls. So I have something in there now that is 27 bytes. Oh, it's just showing me the. Do I need to put a slash on the end here? There we go. That looks better. Um, so I don't have. I have 244 bytes in the output. That looks much better this time. Oh, sorry. 240 bytes in this one. Um, so let's run it again. Now I don't get anything, but that's okay because I remember I would have been writing out files and I, did, I commented that out because I didn't want to. I didn't want to bother for the support. So let's. Let's let's try to submit that one more time. And hopefully this time we will get it. And success. Yes, that one feels good. Um, that was a really fun challenge. Um, and it was fun. I mean, I don't even know what how far I'm into this video here, you know, well over an hour. Um it was fun because I had to pull this Python apart. Um, I eventually got to the point where I thought that was too hard and I found the shortcut of looking through snake trace to get to the, you know, seeing what was going on. Um, it actually might be possible, you know, in the description here, they tell us they, they, what I use snake trace for was to realize that it was specifically looking into temp super sensitive files. If I had seen that here in the prompt, I might've been able to just take that guess and go straight to Wireshark actually, um, running it. So I would run it. I would go to see if I put a file into super sensitive files and ran it, see in Wireshark the requests it was making, and then I can go to the same kind of dynamic analysis I did, um, putting in files, looking at the key that was coming back, figuring out how that impact, how that was used to decrypt. Um, but still, even with this shortcut, um, it was a super challenging problem. Um, it was a nice little twist in there at the end where they say, where they make you think about what happens if there's files, um, if there's folders in the directory you're looking at. Um, it's Again, that's a very typical run code thing um, where you can get stuck for a long time, actually. Um, and if you do get stuck, you know, if you go to, if you go to their, they just moved to discord now, but if you go to their discord and say, Hey, one of the admins, can you give me a, give me a hint as to what's going on? Um, they won't let you stay stuck for too long, which is another thing that's really cool about them is, um, you know, they're all about, you know, helping you learn as well. So, um, anyway, really cool challenge. Um, I really like the Python stuff. Um, I would love to see. I'm hoping to see some of the solutions of people who went further on the manual route and actually did the reverse engineering. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, thanks so much for sticking around till the end. Uh, you're, you're awesome for doing that. And uh, I will talk to you next time.